Example 3, we're asked to solve the following system, x squared plus y squared equals 16, and x squared minus 2y equals 8. We're going to solve this using elimination. The way that it's set up, we have the x squareds aligned vertically, we have the equal signs aligned vertically, and the constants. And if you look at the y terms, in the first equation we have a y squared, and in the second we have a linear y term, a negative 2y. So although these are unlike terms, we can still use or elimination to eliminate the x squareds and get this all into y's, into one variable. So I'll rewrite the system here, x squared plus y squared equals 16, x squared minus 2y equals 8. So in order to eliminate the x squareds, I'm going to multiply one of the equations. I'm going to choose the first one. I'm going to multiply it by negative 1 to get that opposite sign on the x squared term. So that will give me negative x squared minus y squared equals negative 16. I'll rewrite the second equation. So now when I add the two equations, when I add down the columns, I get negative x squared and positive x squared will add up to 0. Those are eliminated. Now again, like I said, these are not like terms, but they're all y terms, so I'm just going to combine and bring them down. So I'm going to rewrite here as negative y squared minus 2y. Again, they can't be combined together, but we can write them together down here. Bring down our equal sign, and then we've got negative 16 plus 8 is negative 8. So now we've made this into an equation with just one variable, and it's quadratic, so we can use our methods of factoring if possible or quadratic formula if we want to solve this. So I'm going to actually add the y squared and the 2y to the right side so I can keep a positive y squared term. So I'm going to get 0 equals y squared plus 2y minus 8. So now I can try to factor and it actually does factor but we know if it didn't factor we could do quadratic formula. So we've got y and y, we've got 2 and 4 and we need a plus and a minus, and that does work. So then we can set both of these factors to zero. So we're going to get y equals 2, or y equals negative 4. So then we just need to substitute these back into either of the original equations to solve for the corresponding x value. So I'll plug into the second equation, and I'm choosing the second equation just because there's no squared on the y. It totally doesn't matter. You could plug into either one, but just to keep my work a little bit less likely to make a mistake. So I'll substitute in. So I've got x squared minus 2 times, I'll plug in the negative 4 first. So that gives me x squared plus 8 equals 8. So if I subtract the 8 from both sides, I'm going to get x squared equals 0. And then if I take the square root of both sides to remove that squared, technically we would do plus or minus, but it'll just be plus or minus 0. So I'm going to get x equals 0. So I would have the apparent solution, negative 4, whoops, 0, negative 4. Okay, so now I'll plug in my y value of 2 into my second equation here. So I want x squared minus 2 times 2 equals 8. So I get x squared minus 4 equals 8. So if I add 4 to both sides, I get x squared equals 12. And then I'll do the square root of both sides, including my plus or minus. So I know 12 is not a perfect square, but 4 is a perfect square, and that divides into 12. So I know that the square root of 12 would be, square root of 4 is 2. So I'll take out a 2, so this will be 2 radical 3. So plus and minus 2 radical 3. So that means I actually get two apparent solutions from this one y value. So I'm getting 2 radical 3, comma 2, and then negative 2 radical 3, 
comma 2. So I actually have one, two, three apparent solutions to this system. So then we just need to go back through and check to make sure none of these solutions are extraneous. So first our ch I'll check my 0, negative 4. So I'll substitute into both equations. So I'll go into the first one here first. 0 squared plus negative 4 squared equals 16. So 0 squared 0, negative 4 squared 16. So I get 16 equals 16. That's good. That works. Now I'll go into the second equation. 0 squared minus 2 times negative 4 for the y equals 8. So again, I've got 0 squared is 0, minus 2 times negative 4, that gives me an 8, and I get 8 equals 8, so that's good. So we verified our 0, 4, or sorry, 0, negative 4. Now let's check our 2 radical 3, 2. So I'll substitute into the first equation, 2 radical 3 squared plus 2 squared equals 16. Well, if I square 2 radical 3, that's going to give me 12, because 2 squared is 4, radical 3 squared is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, or if you remember, over here, we did the square root of 12, and we got 2 radical 3. So this is going to give me 12, plus 2 squared is 4, and I do get 16 equals 16, that's true. And I'll substitute into my second one, so 2 radical 3 squared minus 2 times 2 for the y, equals 8. So again, 2 radical 3 squared is 12, minus 2 times 2 is 4, 12 minus 4 is 8. So this works. So I verified 2 radical 3, 2 is a solution. And then I just got my final solution to verify. So I'll check my negative 2 radical 3, 2. So I'll substitute in negative 2 radical 3 squared plus 2 squared equals 16, and again we're going to get 12 plus 4 is 16, so that's good. And then finally we need to plug into our second equation, negative 2 radical 3 squared minus 2 times 2 equals 8, and again I'm going to get my 12 minus 4 is 8, so I get 8 equals 8. So I verified all three of those solutions.